Hello friends, James Stevenson back with part 14 in my Tesla earnings forecast video review series. I am joined as always by my co-host, Loki, who uh, you can see in the reflection off the TV, but uh, uh, not directly because of his big pile of blankies. But there he is. There's that little dog. Uh, but today's uh, episode is an episode of Breakfast with Loki, so we'll see if we can get him interested. Let me rearrange some stuff here. If I set some breakfast in front of him, uh, please hold. Breakfast. Breakfast. Okay, there you go, buddy. There you go, buddy. We'll see if he's interested. Let's try some pate this time, see if he's interested in starting up with that. And while he's trying to decide, I will share my desktop and go to the next slide in my forecast review series. So in part 13, we looked at this Tesla quarterly megawatt hours deployed chart. If you didn't catch part 13 and you're interested in that chart, go check it out. Which means we are now to my earnings per share chart. Now, I'm not aware of anybody else who makes this chart uh, in this format, so uh, check it out. I captioned this one rather than showing just earnings per share. This chart shows each category of revenue and expense per share. I'm forecasting $1.33 of non-GAAP EPS in Q2, which would be an all-time record for any quarter and a huge sequential and year-over-year -year increase. So what are we looking at here? This one I feel justified in describing in greater detail than most of these charts because uh, there's a bunch going on here and because this is a non-traditional visualization. So uh, what I'm showing in these two stacked bars is how Tesla makes its money and then how Tesla spends its money. And any money they don't spend uh, remains as profit uh, placed on top of this stack of expenses. Uh, so I'll walk you through it. On the revenue side, I have a legend that shows the lightest green color here is automotive revenue. That is where Tesla is making most of their revenue. So that makes up most of Tesla's revenue per share. If you add these three uh, blocks together, you get all of Tesla's uh, revenue per share. The medium green color here is the energy division's revenue per share, 73 cents. And then everything else combined is 62 cents per share worth of revenue. So, you know, this includes uh, used vehicle sales and Tesla insurance and the uh, online store for Tesla and everything that doesn't count as auto sales or leasing or energy division storage or production revenue. Okay, so that's all of Tesla's revenues over here. That's what they're working with. That's, that's all the money they took in. Now, what did they do with that money? Well, mostly what they had to spend that money on was making the stuff that they sold people uh, over here. So for the automotive sales, $7.31 worth of revenue per share is paired with $5.69 worth of automotive cost of sales per share. Uh, that's what you see here, just <laughs> labeled auto, C-O-S, automotive cost of sales per share is more than half of Tesla's revenue per share. So if, you, if you're wondering what's the primary thing Tesla is spending money on, probably it's not surprising that they're spending more than half of the money just making the cars that they're selling to people. So the, the, the cost of sales here includes the raw materials and the parts Tesla buys from third party uh, vendors and the labor that works at the factories to produce stuff, uh, cars in this case, and 
uh, the depreciation on the capital investment Tesla had to make in those factories. So factories are long life assets. So they're capitalized and then depreciated over time so that you don't hit the P&L for all of the expense of a factory the, the month that it opens, right? That would be a very silly way of reporting back to your investors how much money you're making to report some giant loss uh, because you finish construction on a factory. So the smart way to do it, the gap accounting rules require you to capitalize that asset and then expense just a tiny fraction of that uh, every quarter over the expected useful life of that asset. Uh, and that's what depreciation expense is. It's a non-cash expense uh, on the income statement. And uh, you'll see part of it hitting an auto cost of sales, uh, part of it hitting energy division, part uh, hitting all other. And there will be some hitting SG&A uh, and research and development. Actually, both of these have capital assets uh, that depreciate over time. They're smaller amounts, though, than, you know, most, most of Tesla's plant property and equipment is production factory stuff. Uh, all right, so what's the next thing on top? Well, similarly, the energy division has to spend a bunch of money on buying batteries to go into storage products, uh, other parts and raw materials to make energy products like solar panels, and the labor required, pardon my dryer, the labor required to, uh, to manufacture that stuff and then ship it off to be sold, right? So all those are costs of energy division, cost of sales. And then all other uh, is 57 cents, nearly as much as the 62 cents here. Uh, so uh, not Tesla's most profitable division, the all other uh, division, but uh, it's growing and doing a, a better job of being profitable at least every quarter now than it used to. Okay, so that's these first three biggest bars here. Then you got a few smaller ones. One of those is research and development. Tesla spending about 19 cents per share. Or this is my forecast. Uh, what you're looking at on this page is my forecast for Q2 2023. As it says in the label, the same one that I tweeted out on May 7th, the 69 tweet thread we've been reviewing this whole time. Then there's 27 cents worth of SG&A and other selling general and administrative expenses, headquarters type expenses, paying all the people who aren't working uh, at a factory on making more stuff. Uh, so you're talking your uh, finance and human resources and legal and security and uh, whoever else would work at a, a headquarters building. Then you've got stock-based compensation of 13 cents per share, I'm forecasting, and that's all the expenses. Uh, this is another non-cash expense, by the way, stock-based compensation. Uh, you must report on your GAAP income statement as an expense. Uh, so in GAAP earnings, it's included as one of your expenses, but in non-GAAP uh, earnings, you exclude the stock-based compensation because the company did not have to actually spend any money to give their own employees and board members new shares of stock. The company can just create additional shares. The cost to uh, an investor is dilution uh, related with additional uh, stock being created and given to employees and board members as part of their compensation. So what's that leave you with? I've got a dollar nineteen worth of GAAP EPS. Why is it GAAP? Because we did include the stock-based compensation. If you exclude the stock-based compensation, then it's non-GAAP EPS of a dollar thirty-three. So you can see that breakdown in the box right here uh, with all the other stuff that's labeled. And if you want to throw out the deferred tax asset benefit, I'm forecasting 10 cents worth of that. So if Tesla doesn't do any uh, uh, declaration of deferred tax asset benefits this quarter, like they did last quarter, uh, it would be $1.22 instead of $1.33 worth of adjusted non-GAAP EPS. I haven't seen a lot of people 
do this step to back out the portion of the deferred tax asset Tesla declared and show an adjusted non-GAAP EPS. They've mostly just been using the non-GAAP EPS number. And that's all I've got for this video. So Loki did not want to come out and eat breakfast in this episode. Pardon my dryer again. But uh, maybe he will in a future episode. Stay tuned for part 15 uh, and see if uh, you can see Loki eat breakfast. But for now, I will outro and say, if you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, why not go ahead and subscribe? It's free to do that on YouTube or to click the like button, or to comment, say, hey James, thanks for the free uh, charts and analysis and forecasts. Uh, or you can subscribe to me on Twitter, where you will get early access to all these videos, so you don't have to wait for me to make them public one video per day. Uh, and when I tweet them, I embed those videos directly, so you don't even have to go to YouTube to watch them. You can watch them natively in your Twitter. Uh, Elon said they're working on uh, getting a mini player so you can con continue to scroll your feed while the video plays, which would be pretty cool. Uh, as, as Twitter continues to add functionality and features to sharing videos uh, directly instead of just having to, to share a link. This is going to be a pretty long outro if I don't wrap it up. Uh, so uh, that's 69 cents per week uh, to subscribe to me on Twitter if you're interested in doing that. Uh, thank you to everyone who supports me, either on Patreon or by joining my YouTube channel, as my two executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com, did at the highest support tier, earning them a thank you at the end of every episode, and I'll see you in the next one.